Okay, in this video, we're gonna start talking about decimals. So let's start off by talking about <clears throat> um, how we introduce decimals to students. So I have this question, how would you explain the number 23.17 to a child that has not been introduced to decimals yet? So I feel like most students, especially adult students, are very, very comfortable with decimals and not comfortable with fractions. And um, what's actually interesting is the way that things are taught in elementary school is fractions are taught first. And then after we teach fractions, then we introduce decimals. So even though it seems really, really strange, fractions are comfortable for students and decimals are not at the beginning because decimals are new and fractions are like old at that point. So the best way to explain a new decimal or a new concept of decimals is um, to relate it back to what they know. So in this case, it would be relate it back to a fraction or a mixed number. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to focus on when introducing decimals, is re relating it back to a fraction or a mixed number. So in this case, the number 23.17, um, the way I would relate that back to a fraction or a mixed number, it's 23 holes and 17, this is in the hundreds place, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So 23 and 17 hundredths, okay? You could also um, write that as an improper fraction if you wanted to, it'd be 2317 over 100. Um, but that's the first thing you do is talk about how we can write decimals, I'm sorry, we can write fractions with a denominator of 10 or 100 or 1,000 as a decimal, okay? So some other things, like this is how you would introduce it. Other things you need to focus on when you're teaching decimals, you also need to um, be really particular um, and teach how to say it. Okay, so if you noticed before, I would just said 23.17, um, we don't wanna, use that terminology when you use the correct terminology because it's difficult to read decimals and so constantly saying the correct terminology over and over and over will um, reinforce that in your students so the way you read a decimal this number two three point one seven you read this is a whole number so the two and the three you read is 23 the decimal point you use the word and and then you read this the way you would read a whole number. So the one seven, you would read a 17. And then you say the place value at the end. Okay, so you say the last place value. So the seven is in the hundredths place. So since the seven is in the hundredths place, then the way we would read this decimal is 23, or the way we'd say it or write it, is 23, so that's that part, and, make sure you put and, or you say and, 17 hundredths. <clears throat> okay, and if you need to, um, just a reminder, like, if I was needed to go through all my place values here, Let's do seven. So this is the ones place right here. That's my decimal place. The first place value after the ones place is the tenths. The next one is the hundredths. The next spot is the thousandths. So it's the same as like ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. You just put a TH at the end of each of these words. And I skip the ones. I don't have once, I start with the tenths place. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths. This would be my ten thousandths. <clears throat> this would be my hundred thousandths. After a hundred thousand is a million, so this would be my millionths. After a million is ten million, so this would be the ten millionths, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, let's do one, another example. If I had the number um, one, 
point one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> so the way I would read this, I'm not gonna write it down because it's kind of out of room here, but it would be one and you read this number like a whole number. So one, two, three, four, five. If you needed to, you could put like a comma there. It would be twelve thousand three hundred forty-five, and then you put the place value of the five. The five is in the tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So this decimal would be read as one and twelve thousand three hundred forty-five hundred thousands, because the five is in the hundreds, thousands spot. Okay. So introducing decimals is important to relate, relate it to a fraction. It's important to go over how to read the decimal and to always, as much as we want to say 23.17 here, it's really important to say 23 and 17 hundredths just to reinforce that terminology. Um, it's also important to talk about um, expanded notation with the exponents and without the exponents because the students have spent a lot of time going over that. So let's cover that. <clears throat> So expanded notation is another thing to make sure you cover with your students for decimals. So let's start off without exponents. So let me give the number, let's give the number 213 and 456 thousand. Okay, so without exponents, the two is in the hundreds place. So it would be two times 100. The one is in the tens place. So it would be one times 10. The three is in the ones place. So it would be three times one. The four is in the tenths place. So we write that as four times one tenth. The five is in the hundredths place. So we write that five times one hundredth. And the six is in the thousandths place. So we write that as six times one over a thousand. So that is expanded form without exponents. If I wanted to do with exponents, two times a hundred would be two times 10 squared. 1 times 10 would be 1 times 10 to the first. 3 times 1 would be 3 times 10 to the 0 power. 4 times 1 tenth, I don't know if you remember how to write 1 tenth as a 10 to some power. You use it using negative exponents. So it would be 4 to the 10 to the negative, or sorry, 4 times 10 to the negative 1 power. A hundredth would be 5 times 10 to the negative 2 power and a thousandth would be six times 10 to the negative three power. So that's how to write with and without exponents. And another um, thing when you're teaching exponents, I'm sorry, when you're teaching decimals, we talked about how to relate it back to a fraction. We talked about how to say it correctly, expand in notation. It's also super important to give real life examples of decimals. So think through what a real life example of a decimal would be. So the most obvious one probably is money because students understand money. Usually by the time they get to decimals, they understand um, cents and dollars and coins and stuff. And so you can relate decimals with money. Um, another place that they've probably seen decimals is like at a gas pump, like whenever you're pumping your gas, the number of gallons of gas or the price of the gas. So um, at a gas pump. Um, and then another place they might have seen it, um, I don't know if you pay attention, but at the store, when you go to the grocery store, lots of times they have like the price per unit. So price per unit at the grocery store. And those usually involve decimals store. There you go. Okay, so those are some examples of how students might see um, decimals in real life. Okay, so let's go over a couple more things. Uh, let's practice doing the different notations for 
decimals. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a number. I'm gonna give you the number 2.0156. So I'm saying that, I'm saying it like that so that we can practice writing it correctly without me giving you the answer. So um, I want you to put it as a mixed number. And this will be on your homework. Mixed number. I want you to write it in words. I want you to write and it in expanded form without exponents and then write it in expanded form with exponents. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and take a second to do that and then I'll you can resume it and you can check your answers. So mixed number would be two and it's 156 and that's in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths place. So this is over 10,000. In words, this would be two, and that and is the decimal point. This number zero one five six is one hundred fifty six. And the six is in the ten thousandths place, so it's ten thousandths. <clears throat> Writing it in expanded form without exponents. I have two in the ones place, so two times one. Um, I don't need to do zero times anything, so one is in the hundredths place, so one times one hundredth. Five is in the thousandths place, so one, sorry, five times one over one thousand. And six is in the ten thousandths place, so one over ten thousand. And with exponents, it'd be two times one is ten to the zero power. 1 times 1 hundredth is 10 to the negative 2 power. 1 one thousandth is 10 to the negative 3 power. And 10,000 is 10 to the negative 4. I'm sorry, 1 over 10,000 is 10 to the negative 4. Okay. So there's more of this on your homework for you to practice. Um, two more things to go over in this video. Let's practice... Um, if I give it to you in this form, putting it back into your decimal form, and then let's also go over base 10 blocks with decimals. Okay, so if I ask you to write in decimal form, and I give you the problem three times 10 to the ne negative two plus eight times 10 squared plus four times 10 to the first power. Okay, so if you notice those aren't in order. So usually the way I do it is I kind of make blanks to put my answer in. So 10 squared, this would be 10 squared is the highest exponent and then I'm gonna have a 10 to the first and a 10 to the zero after that. And then decimal. And then after that's my negative exponents, 10 to the negative first power, 10 to the negative second power. And that's everything there. Okay, so then I go to fill them in. I have a three in my 10 to the negative two place. I have an eight in my 10 squared place. And I have a four in my 10 to the first place. And I need zeros everywhere else. So my answer would be 840, 840 and three one hundredths. Okay, so no matter how many you have, like, Let's say this was 10 to the negative fifth, you need to go all the way out to 10 to the negative fifth to put the three there, and then you'd have zeros everywhere else. Okay, and the last thing, let's talk about base 10 blocks with decimals. So we've done base 10 blocks with whole numbers, now we're gonna apply base 10 blocks with decimals. So if you remember our base 10 blocks, we have a cube, we have a flat, we have a long and we have a unit. So before, my unit represents my ones place, long is tens place, flat is the hundreds, cube is the thousands place. Well now, you can make any of these into a decimal, it's just you have to define your unit. Okay, so what that means is pick what you want to be the ones place. So if I made the cube the ones place, the flat 
would be the tenths, the one over 10 place. The long would be the hundredths place and the unit would be at the thousandths place. Or if I made the flat the one, a cube would be 10, a long would be the tenths, a unit would be the hundredths. Or you could do the long as the unit. This is my one, ones place, tens place, hundreds place. That makes this my tenths. Okay, so let's do a couple problems like that. So if I asked you to draw the decimal three and 15 hundredths with base 10 blocks, and I want you to do it two different ways. So basically define your unit two different ways. Okay, so let's say part A. Let's uh, make the flat be my unit. So this is how you define your unit. Say flat equals one. So if you look back up here, the flat equals one, the cube would be the tens place, this is the ones place, this is the tenths, this is the hundredths. So for three and 15 hundredths, the number three means I need three flats. Okay, so here's my three flats. <clears throat> so that's my three. One tenth, the long would be the tenths. So I need one tenth here. So that's my one tenth. And then the five hundredths, the unit would be the five hundredths. So this would, I need five of those. So that's three and fifteen hundredths. As long as you have to write that the flat equals one. So that's one way to do it. Um, another way, I can't make the long the unit because if the long is my um, hole here, I can I have units that I could um, use to represent my tenths, but I don't have anything I could use to represent my hundredths. So for the other way, you have to make the cube into the hole. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna let, same problem, it's just I'm gonna let the cube equal my hole. So if the cube is my hole, I have three holes here, so I need to draw three cubes. That's my three. And then my um, tenths place, if this is my hole, the flat's the tenth. Okay, so I need one tenth. And then five hundredths, long would be my hundredths. So one, two, three, four, five. So five hundredths. And if it helps, if you need to, if you let that be your hole, you could say, so, the flat is one tenth, the long is one hundredth, and the unit is one thousandth. If you needed to label that so that you are able to do the rest of your problem. Okay. So let me know if you have any questions about that.